All right, moving on. Let's go and give our predictions, Aaron. Chris is not with us tonight. Um, he's a little under the weather, but this is the point of the week where everybody gives out their predictions for scores. And so before we let you all know what our predictions are, you having just broken down the film for us and me having interviewed uh, someone who covers their team and now diving into this team statistically and the film what is your feel going into this? Your confidence level? Your um, what are you wanting to see from Ohio State, maybe offensively or defensively? And then we'll dive into our, our predictions. But what are you going to watch for? What are you looking for on Saturday? I'm going to look at the coaching staff first and foremost. I want to see the playbook get opened up a little bit. This is a good opportunity to do that, to try some things and uh, against a medium quality opponent. Uh, like I just said, they're kind of the medium between Youngstown and Indiana. So this is a good opportunity for the coaching staff to kind of put themselves out there and show Kyle McCord that they trust him to execute their offense. So that's the first thing I'm going to be looking for. Secondly, I want to see the line gel against this team. All right, they play fast. Let's see how they adjust to that. They're used to kind of getting shoved forward. Even Youngstown State gave them some, some strength issues there. So uh, this team's giving a, a different look. All right. Uh, Kyle McCord making the throws. This team runs six DBs. Is Kyle McCord going to see the whole field? Or is he only going to focus on the play? Because mm. he missed a wide open Julian Fleming last week. Just yeah. to throw it to MHJ in double coverage. Can I ask a question off of that real Absolutely. quick? Absolutely. Can Ryan Day do anything in his play calling offensively to limit that or help aid maybe? And McCord's ability to to <clears throat> maybe focus on half the field, like can he break half the field down for him, or is this more like no, you want it spread out, and then hey, let's run some maybe some mesh routes or intermediate route, a long route, or or and, and this would be my opinion. This is what I would do if I was Ryan Day. I would be running the football first, second, third down at these guys, and, and may, until you stop me, I'm running it. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> that's a good strategy if this is like a do or die need to win the game. But this is Western Kentucky we're talking about. This isn't Michigan State or somebody that poses a an imminent threat, okay? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful of their of Western Kentucky's program, but this is a game that we're going to win even if we play like crap. Um so that's why I said I, I I would like to see Ryan Day open up the playbook and show Kyle McCord and the rest of the team that he trusts him to execute and to answer your question regarding like seeing half the field or do you need to see the whole field? I think that he's already only seeing half the field. That's why he missed Julian Fleming wide open to throw to a double covered MHJ because he didn't see the whole field. Now, another aspect of that is uh, Youngstown State got a little bit of pressure on the play and he felt nervous. So yeah, he had to he get rid of the ball. Pressure. Yeah, he had yeah. to get rid of the ball quickly. So, um, again, this is just a good opportunity for the offensive line to make proper adjustments, gel together in a game atmosphere, and give Kyle McCord a chance to really uh, to grow, to continue to grow. All right, let's take a look at our predictions, and then we'll tell you how we came up with these. So let's start with Chris's, which is right there in the middle. Chris is going for a, a big win, 42-7. to seven. He says, hey. I think uh, we're going to score a lot, and they're not going to score much at all. So Chris is saying he's he's taking the over there today uh, with that one, 42-7. to seven. Aaron, you're a little bit on the lower side of things with the scoring. You said 27-14. to 14. So you think that this defense is going to, you know, maybe make our offense uh, sputter a little bit, and the defense is going to only hold them to two scores. I'm on the other hand, I'm going – Let's just everybody score. It's a scoring palooza for me. 45 to 24. I do think Western Kentucky is going to put the biscuit in the basket a little bit here on offense, on our defense. Um, but I also think they can't stop what we have in the backfield. And if they get worried about the run, I do think people like Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Egbuka and Cade Stover can have themselves 
a day. So those are our predictions. We want you to put your predictions in the comment section below. And if anybody gets the exact score correctly, you will win a free t-shirt from Ohio State if you're the or from us, that is, from the OHL podcast, if you're the first to do so. Aaron, how'd you come up with your score? Um, just because I'm not sure that we're at a level of execution yet to score that many points. Uh, you know, if we only put 35 against Youngstown, I'm not entirely sure or confident rather that we're going to put more up against Western Kentucky. But football is a game of matchups, and this one does present a solid matchup, no lie. But I think the fact we're going to open up the playbook a little bit, well, I think we're going to open up the playbook a little bit. Uh, and try some different things. It may or may not gel, you know, and I could be way off the mark here. If they end up opening up the playbook and they hit on all these things and they're executing on all cylinders, dude, this could be a 63 to 10 type of game, you know, because mm. it is that kind of matchup. You know, we discussed it. Their defense is do or die. And against USF, they they died a lot. And USF doesn't have this, the athletes that we do. So it's, you know, this no. is one of those things. No, this is – yeah, this is – I think we're going to do well offensively this week, which could be a little bit of fool's gold the week before Notre Dame. Um, I, yeah. I think we're going to do well offensively, but I also think we're going to come away from this a little bit worried about our about our uh, defense. Um, so we need to be concerned about the fact that we're fa- – this is the first time we're facing an offensive opponent that can put pressure on our defensive backs with that passing game. Now we have been very high on how they have done. This is the first time we're going to see have, have we really made those strides in the defensive backfield? Like we think we have, if we come away from this and they've only, they can only score 10 points or we only hold them to like, you know, a couple field goals or a touchdown and a field goal or a touchdown, a couple field goals. Our defense is legit. This is probably, yeah. this is probably the most, I would say most difficult, I won't say best, most difficult passing attack we will face this year. Yes, I agree with that, and that's just because it's so intricate. You know, I know we kind of joked and said it's like backyard football a little bit, but there's a lot more nuance to Air Raid than what we're giving it credit for. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more going on there, yeah. There's a reason uh, that it became what it did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's because it can be successful, and Western Kentucky has had a high level of success with it. That's I don't think that's any secret. If you, if you know anything about uh, Western Kentucky at all, they've they've had a high level of success with it in the league they play in. Um, as for our defense, I think that it's going to be uh, an interesting matchup because Notre Dame can throw the ball a little bit, and they run some of the same schemes that Western Kentucky does. They the seam routes that I showed you on the film. Notre Dame will run that, um, and they'll run it out of 11 personnel, and they'll have the the tight end kind of on a a little out route there, five yards and out a little bit, and they'll hit them with it. And that's what they killed North Carolina State with. NC State focused big on the seam routes and got toasted with the tight end short. Uh, So that's something I think that this is going to help us prepare a little bit for Notre Dame. What Notre Dame also has is a is a legitimate running attack, <laughs> right? Yeah, not, not to understate that at all. Uh, if if Western Kentucky runs it's the football for a problems too, yeah. If Western Kentucky runs the football for a hundred yards or more against us, that's not good. We're, no, we're in trouble because they don't that's, run the ball. That's not good. So <laughs> so we need to make sure that we keep that clean. Uh, yeah, this is going to be extremely interesting football game. I just I just feel like it's going to be a lot of offense. And that's fine with Western Kentucky's fine with that. They're like, cool. This is the first time where I think Ryan Day's not going to feel stressed about the play clock. <laughs> like the, like <laughs> yeah. he's going to be like, this is his environment. Mm. So I, I really think Ryan Day's looking forward to calling plays in this game. I yeah. really do. I think this is this. He's fine. He got through those first two games and he goes, okay, now I can be me again here. So yeah. <laughs> um, this will be interesting. Now, the thing is, is that puts a lot more stress on Jim Knowles and this defense. And that's what I'm going to be watching. How much better is our defense? You know, statistically, we look really good, but we haven't really played 
a, a team that stresses you, that puts stress, that can find a weakness and attack it, that can get you thinking one thing and they do something else. You know, this is this is going to be a challenge for this defense. I'm looking forward to seeing how well uh, they adjust to that. Hopefully they adjust really well. As yes. always, guys, please hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, all those good things. Ring the bell. We really do appreciate it, and it really does help the channel out. Again, put your prediction in the comment section below on this video. First person who predicts uh, uh, correctly, predicts the score, will win a free t-shirt from us here at the OHIO podcast. Aaron, enjoy the game Saturday, my friend. Thank you much, and you guys as well. Absolutely. Make sure you're tuning in Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on YouTube. We go live. We're going to break this game down. Aaron won't be here. He's going to go serve his weekend for the United States military. Uh, National Guard, I guess, at this point, correct? And yes, uh, sir. There you go. And so we're going to have a very special guest filling <clears throat> in for him and Big Banter CEO. Yeah, the Big Ooh. Banter CEO is coming in. Boss we got to bring, bring in big guns to replace the big guns, if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> yeah. Fair. <laughs> Check that out. Be be here. Be square, as they said back in the eighties. Uh, oh, come on, <laughs> show, showing my gray and my age there. Uh, Sunday night, eight o'clock. Don't want to miss it. Mark your calendars. Go ahead, hit that bell. You'll be reminded. Till next time, be kind to one another. I owe someone's O H. St. Carmen High with all your heart. O H. I owe.